2.35, so you can see the clock just like me. I call Kate Forbes, please. Ms Forbes. To ask the Scottish Government what impact it expects the branch closures announced by RBS to have on communities across Scotland. Minister. Last week's announcement by RBS that it is to close a further 62 Scottish branches is a body blow to communities across Scotland. This most recent announcement is the latest in a long line of branch closure announcements, a programme which is rapidly accelerating, and these closure announcements by RBS and other retail banks are affecting communities across the length and breadth of Scotland. And I welcome the decision that a member's business debate will be held next week to allow all members to raise the concerns of their constituents. As members of this parliament will know, the UK government retains a legislative and regulatory responsibility for banking and financial services, and is the majority shareholder in RBS. However, although not a devolved responsibility, the Scottish Government stands ready to work constructively with UK ministers, RBS management, unions and wider stakeholders to support and reassure customers in light of these planned branch closures and to minimise the negative impact of closures on the well-being of those communities affected across Scotland. In our view, the UK Government should not be a passive bystander. It should take immediate action to defend customers and ensure that communities, and particularly the most vulnerable members of those communities, continue to have access to day-to-day -day banking services, including ATM provision, and to ensure that businesses have the ability to safely, locally, deposit their takings. And while respecting that commercial decisions have been taken by RBS and acknowledging that the use of online banking is growing, the Scottish Government remains steadfast in our opposition to these planned closures proceeding until such time as a guaranteed minimum level of service provision for essential banking services is in place. Kate Forbes. I thank the Minister for that answer and that reminder that banking is a reserve matter and that the UK Government owns a 71% stake in RBS on behalf of taxpayers. And it is many of those taxpayers, for example, in Kyle, Malig, Bewley and Aviemore, whose local branch is being closed and who may now have to travel over an hour to the closest branch. Has the Minister been able to speak to his counterpart in the UK Government about his views on this matter? Minister. Uh, yes, I, I have. I've spoken, I've spoken with Stephen Barclay, the Economic Secretary to the Treasury, yesterday afternoon uh, to press the case for a guaranteed level of access to essential banking services. The UK Government has made clear, in spite of uh, its majority stake in RBS, it will not exercise any influence it may have to support RBS's customers at this time. I very much appreciate that RBS does and must operate on a commercial basis. However, the UK Government, as the government with responsibility for regulation for the financial sector, has a duty to ensure that the banking system meets the needs of all users, whether it be in areas like Aviemore, Bewley and other uh, vital local communities across Scotland. And we believe that um, with, while respecting those commercial uh, relationships, obviously, that the banks have uh, with government, that they should work to ensure that robust alternative options are in place before allowing these bank branch closures to take place. Uh, thank you. I have eight members. I beg your pardon? Can you go back to 10? Do, sorry. Um, yeah. Do you wish to return again? Can I just... Oh, yeah. Yes. I thank the Minister for that answer. The announcement, I think it's worth noting that the announcement by RBS was just the latest in a series of announcements about branch closures, which have seen banks totally desert rural communities like those in my constituency. And it is the elderly, cash-based businesses and rural, rural residents who have the most to lose. How important is it that there is that minimum level of banking services in the most rural dependent communities? My apologies again, Ms Forbes, I was ahead of myself, Minister. Sorry. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I, I certainly agree with the member and indeed with my colleague uh, for representing Argyll and Butte beside me. I know very much in communities like Inverary and the borders as well, where I live, um, these are very acutely felt. But I do agree that these closures will have the greatest impact on those least able to make use of alternative uh, services. We are aware clearly as people within community uh, customers of RBS who, for whom online banking is something entirely new or entirely frightening depending on their, their perspective and clearly um, their ability to use these online services may be limited in stake. I, I am reassured to some extent by conversations with RBS that they are uh, going to make great effort to train those customers uh, on how to access services but we all know in areas of rural Scotland that there are still challenges in terms of digital access, progress is being made but we are, are, are still aware that there are households and customers around the country which may have access to uh, their, their digital services being limited. And so we do need to ensure that suitable, accessible alternative provisions are made to ensure no customers left unbanked by these uh, branch closures. 
Uh, further to that, though, I, I am aware of the work that uh, RBS is doing with post office, um, and they're looking to expand the range of post offices that uh, are obviously covering areas that are losing branches. That is welcome, but I, I'm also aware that there are limits to how much cash can be banked at post offices, something I raised with Stephen Barclay yesterday. And there's also challenges in terms of the range of services that are available within post offices. It effectively, it's a basic banking service, not a full range banking service. So that is a, a concern we've also raised with the UK Minister. And uh, where there are commitments by RBS to expand its mobile banking network, we have also concerns that they may not have sufficient vehicles and vehicles with disabled access that would allow all customers, regardless of their vulnerability, to access services. So there's much to be done, and we want to have a dialogue with RBS and the UK government about making sure these limitations are addressed before the closures take place. Uh, thank you. I've at least eight members wanted to ask questions. I've, I've asked respectfully if the Minister could be uh, briefer in his comments. I'm sure they'll be duplicated. I'll try to get through as many as possible, bearing in mind there's a debate next week as well. Mike Rumbles, I beg your pardon, murder phrase will be followed by Mike Rumbles. <laughs> uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The Minister mentioned in his reply to uh, Kate Forbes the issue of uh, internet banking, which is used by, by RBS as one of the reasons for closing branches. However, as I'm sure the Minister will appreciate, there are many parts of rural Scotland, including areas of Perth and Kinross, where a number of branches are closing, where both mobile and broadband connectivity are such that people cannot do internet banking, even if they wanted to. Will uh, the Minister make these points forcefully to RBS when he meets them, uh, as I and my colleagues have already done? Minister. I, I certainly recognise the point in, in my response to, to Kate Forbes. My second, second response there, I, I, I recognise the point. I think uh, Murdo Fraser is raising that fairly. Um, clearly, progress is being made on ensuring digital access, but we are all aware the reality is on the ground. There will still be communities, whether it's in Persia or, or the Highlands or other parts of rural Scotland, and indeed some urban communities where either mobile banking is uh, via mobile phones or, or, or uh, broadband is still a challenge. And so that is something we very strongly encourage RBS to consider. Uh, and we have raised that issue already, but I, continue, I will continue to raise that point with RBS and hopefully we'll still make progress on that issue. Mike Rumbles, followed by John McAlpine. Um, would the Minister, um, I, I've written to the Chief Executive of the Royal Bank of Scotland asking him to examine the possibility of working with other businesses, even his competitors, to establish shared premises from which to operate. Would the Minister agree that, and would he support such an initiative which would share costs and allow banks to remain in our local towns and villages across the northeast of Scotland, which is particularly hit by these proposed closures. Minister. I, I certainly would welcome that. Uh, I think Mike Rumbles makes a point, which is similar to a point I've raised myself with RBS, and I think he's right to try and challenge these issues. Is it strictly necessary to close all branches if there could be collaboration in providing a central facility? As I understand it, there would need to be primary legislation change to allow that to happen. That would obviously be a matter for UK Parliament in terms of the regulatory powers and legal powers over banking and financial services resting at Westminster. But we certainly have made uh, comments and I would certainly welcome dialogue with RBS and I believe he is right to identify the need for banks to collaborate. They do traditionally uh, see themselves very much as competitors and don't talk about these issues, whether it's ATM provision or or indeed branch, uh, branch provision. And I think there's an opportunity out of the very strong public concern that's been raised here in relation to these, uh, this latest tranche of closures and previous tranches for the banks to actually look to collaborate to try and address the issue. There is obviously a growth in online banking. We, we're not blind to that. We recognize that it's happening, but the pace of change is catching customers out. And I think that's the key challenge we all have to face. Joan McAlpine, followed by Neil Finlay. Thank you, presiding officer. These uh, proposed closures don't just affect small villages. I've calculated that there are 16 branches right across my south of Scotland region that will be affected, including uh, market towns like Lockerbie, Annan and Langham. Um, last year, the Royal Bank of Scotland tried to improve its image with a brand campaign calling itself the Royal Bank for Scotland. Does the Minister agree with me that many people will feel very cynical and regard that as a breach of advertising standards at the very least? Minister. Um, well, I, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not the regulator of advertising, but I, I take uh, Joan McAlpine's point. Um, I mean, I certainly recognise in my own area, in, in the sort of eastern area of the borders, that uh, my nearest branch is now in England, which is an irony. Uh, so, and given the point that uh, Joan McAlpine has just made about branding, 
Um, it is a, is a concern. There's six of the eight branches left in the borders are being closed as part of this programme. So while a quarter of all Royal Bank's branches across Scotland are closing, six in one local authority are going in. And there are other local authorities like South Lanarkshire losing seven branches out of this latest programme. So clearly it's having a potentially quite devastating impact at a local level. And that's why it's raised so much concern at this point. The previous closures that have been made, we've been given reassurances that the nearest branch should be in the local town and therefore villages needn't suffer too badly. Now those branches are going as well. That's got serious consequences for vulnerable customers and small businesses who now got very lengthy travelling arrangements to, 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 to travel in order to bank their cash. And in a tourism driven economy in much of rural Scotland, that's a real challenge. Neil Finlay, followed by Donald Cameron. Uh, RBS have bailed out of West Lothian, leaving only Bathgate and Livingston branches open. And each of the places where they've vacated, we now have um, uh, properties lying in the high street vacant. Many community groups want these properties to take, take them over for community use, but have been refused by RBS because of their greed, because they want their hands on the cash. Isn't it a disgrace that there is no legacy being left after years of loyalty from customers in these communities? Minister. I, I do think there's an issue here, I mean, not just RBS, but other banks as well, that had loyal customers for many generations who've obviously supported the banks and have been supported by the banks in return. We shouldn't forget that. But um, I do think uh, Neil Finlay makes a, a valid point regarding what happens to the, the vacant branches once they are closed. Uh, certainly, it needn't be a, necessarily a black or white situation. We have availability of uh, funding through Scottish Land Fund, potentially for communities, if there's an interest in taking over facilities. If there's a willingness on the part of the, of the banks to actually sell to those communities, we can maybe find a way. So that's where this parliament can make its view clear and to Royal Bank and other banks that potentially we would look to the bank to, to engage in those opportunities with local communities and see if the facilities can be used, whether it's to house uh, community facilities or credit unions or other alternatives, that would be certainly welcome to have that dialogue with RBS and other retail banks. It's not just RBS, unfortunately, that are closing branches. Donald Cameron. Thank you, Deputy President. What reassurances can the Minister give to island communities such as Barra, whose RBS branch is under threat, and who are particularly vulnerable by their very nature to closure of services? Minister. Well, uh, as I explained in my original answer, I mean, unfortunately, because this parliament, this government does not have regulatory or legislative powers, there's nothing we can do directly to force uh, banks to change their minds. Clearly, as a parliamentarians, we can all make our views known to RBS and to, to the senior management team in RBS over concerns. Um, island communities like Barra, I recognise uh, the ludicrous situation that I think Angus Brendan McNeil, as MP for Western Isles, made the point that it would probably be easier for someone from... Uh, from Kent to travel to, to Cali to do their banking, it would be from somewhere from Barra to get to the mainland. So this is the real nature of the challenge we face in our most remote and rural communities. And that's why it is so potentially devastating to lose our branch network. There really does need to be a concerted effort um, to, to make sure that there is adequate provision left for communities once these branches go, if they go at all. Uh, but we obviously have no direct power in this place to influence that decision. So it really is down to UK ministers who have a controlling stake in the bank uh, to, to make their influence felt. Thank you. I'm sorry that must conclude topical questions. I apologise to Alec Neil and Alec Rowley being unable to take them. I hope you're in the debate next week and must move on to the next item of business. I apologise, Mr Lyle, as well. Let me not forget you.